All right, so in the previous video, we talked about singly linked lists. Now these are great, and we just talked about the advantages of them over arrays and other types of data structures. Now I wanna introduce the concept here of circular lists, and this is gonna to apply to doubly linked lists, which we'll talk about in the next video as well. Now, I want you to think why we would use a circular list and what a circular list even is. Now, what I mean by circular is that this last node here, rather than pointing to null, which it's been doing before, because there's no next node after it, it actually points back to the head node of our list. So what actually happens here is that this next node is always pointing back to the head. Now, before you continue on with this video, I seriously urge you to just take a second and think why we would even want to do this. Can this offer a speed thing? Can it make it easier to access things? Why would we do this and what might we need to modify even in the node or in the SSL class to make this worthwhile? And then I'm going to explain the answer in just a second. All right, so I hope you guys have thought about this. Now, what I'm going to do is just modify this SLL class here and hopefully what I start doing will make sense to you guys, but I want you to kind of figure it out on your own. So this here is called the head of our list, right? And this is the node that right now we're storing in SLL. All we need is access to this head node and we can successfully traverse all of the different nodes until we reach the end node. Now, immediately, some of you might have started thinking, well, if we have this last node, our traversal from the previous video isn't gonna work because in that traversal, we had a while loop and we said something like while current dot next um, doesn't equal null or while current. So if you get rid of that dot next doesn't equal null, but now we're never going to have a null value because this last point here is always going to be pointing to the head. So this is why I'm going to make a modification to my class and hopefully you guys can understand why in just a second. And then we'll, we'll see how we can change this, um, while loop to do a proper traversal of a circular list. So what I'm going to do now is rather than keeping track of what we call the head node, I'm actually going to keep track of the tail node in my SSL class. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to have this tail node being pointed to um, by this tail attribute. And rather than caring about the head, which I don't care about anymore, I'm just going to care about the tail. Now, the reason I'm going to do this is because if I have reference to the tail node, that means that I actually have reference to the head node. So by having reference to this, this one here, I also have reference to this. Now, why is that good? Why wouldn't I just have reference to the head node? Well, if I have reference to the front and the back of the list or the beginning or the end of the list, that means I can perform operations on the beginning and the end of the list very quickly. And that is something that is awesome to be able to do because previously, if we wanted to say, add something to the end of our list here, well, we would need to traverse the entire list to be able to do that. And that would take O of N time. But now if we have reference to this tail node, since it points back to the head node, if I want to add something at the beginning, all I need to do, and I'm just going to erase a few things here to make this a little bit cleaner while I do this. All I need to do if I want to add a new node at the beginning is make this pointer here, and I'm just going to erase it, point to that new node. So let's say I want to add a new node. I'm just going to draw it small so we can actually see it here. Let's say it has five, and this is its next property. Well, what I do is I set this node to be equal to tail.next, which is actually going to be equal to the head node. So I point it here. So the next property points to there. And then I change what originally was pointing from there to point to this new node. So I say, you know what, this next property here, we're going to point that to this new node. And now I've successfully added something at the beginning of the list. But now what if I want to add something to the end of the list? So let's reverse all this and let's change and now see how you add something to the end. So let's pretend this is circular right now, and I want to add something to the end. Well, I have reference to this tail node. I know where this tail node is. So all I need to do is add a new node. Let's say we'll add it down here. We'll call this one maybe value nine, and I set its next property to the first node in my list. So I set it to the head node, or in this case, the tail dot next, right? So tail dot next, that's what I set it equal to the next property. So this now points over here to this. And now all I do is I change this pointer on the end node to point to this new node, which is going to be the end node in our list. So I know this looks kind of confusing now, but anyways, that goes to there. So now this one here is now our new tail reference. And we now point tail to here, this new node. And now since this one points to the head node, it works the exact same. And if I want to add something after it, that's how I do it. I simply just repeat that process. If I want to add something before, well, I have access to this head node, so I can add a new node, 
point it to that and then point the new node to this head node, right? And that's how we do it with a circular list. Now, this offers a ton of advantages because that means that whenever we want to add something to the end of the list, we no longer need to traverse the entire list. And that is the reason that we use a circular list. So simply adding that one extra pointer that goes from the tail to the head and keeping reference of the tail instead of our head, we're able to get that massive speed advantage while still using a singly linked list and not using a ton of memory in our computer, which is one of the disadvantages of a doubly linked list, which we'll talk about later. So anyways, now that we've done that, let's kind of talk about how we can implement some of these methods with a little bit of pseudocode in case anyone's confused. So I realized in the last video, I was kind of cutting off some of the code on my webcam in the bottom right hand corner. So I'll try to make sure it doesn't cut off here. But if you haven't noticed, my handwriting is absolutely horrible. So anyways, let's now try to write a method that could add something to the beginning of our list. So let's say we want to add first. That's the method we want to write now for our SLL class. Well, we have this tail node. So what should we start by doing? Well, we don't need to traverse the list because all we need to do is just change around a few pointers. So what we're going to start by doing is creating a new node. So we'll say like n equals node and we'll say n dot value equals, I don't know, let's set it equal to a value of five. And then all we can do is say n dot next is equal to, in this case, it's going to be tail dot next, right? And I'll talk about that in a second, but tail dot next. Because tail.next is this head node, if we're adding to the beginning, we need the next property of our new head node to be the, the current head node, right? The first thing that's actually in our list right now. So we set this next property of this node to go to here. Anyways, hope that makes sense. All right, so now that we've done that, what we can do is change this last node, so this next property here on this one, to point to our new node. And then that's actually all we need to do, um, and we don't even need to mess with the tail. So now what we're going to say is tail dot next equals n. And now what we've successfully done is we've slotted in a new node value five, we've pointed it over here to seven, and then we've changed this pointer. So scratch that off to go to this new node. And this now will be our head node. And since we keep track of the tail and tail dot next is this makes sense, everything works as planned. And that is how we write the pseudocode to add something to the beginning of the list. All right, so now what about the end? And this is the advantage that we're gaining because we already knew kind of how to do that before. Um, but now we're going to have to just change a little bit different things to add to the end here to make it all make sense. So let me get this eraser out here and get rid of everything. All right, so let's erase. Uh, I didn't want to do that. Let's get the stroke eraser. Okay, let's remove actually. Now let's go back to the pointer. Okay, so what we want to do now, sorry about that, is add a new node to the end. So how do we do that? Well, what we need to do is we need to change a few pointers around. So firstly, we need to make sure that we don't lose this head node. So that's an important thing. When we add this new node in and we point to it or we don't point to it, we got to make sure we don't lose this head node. So what I'm going to start by doing is creating a new node. So I'm going to say n equals node and then we'll say n dot value and maybe this time it equals negative one. All right. Now, the first thing we're going to do, so we've just created this new node. I'll try to draw it so you guys can actually see it. It has a value of negative one and it has this next pointer. We're going to set its next pointer equal to the head node to start so that we don't lose this head node. So we're going to say n dot next equals tail dot next. So that means now we have a pointer going here to the head node because tail dot next is that. So this is pointing there. Now what we can do is, well, we can change the pointer of tail, tail dot next to go to this new node. So now we'll say tail dot next equals n. All right. So now let's go here. Let's go to stroke eraser and we'll erase this pointer. And now what we've successfully done is we've changed the tail to point to here as our next node, which is going to be the last node in our list. All right, awesome. And now what's the last step we need to do? Well, we need to say that this is now going to be the new tail because this has the pointer to the head and it's going to be the last element. So what we do for that is we say tail equals n. And that's all we need to do to set this and add that to the end of the list. And that is the massive advantage of cir circular lists is that you're able to access both the front and the back element, which means you can apply operations at the front and end of the list in the same time complexity 
of constant time. Now, the only thing to note here is that if removing an element from the end of the list, it still takes O n time. Now, the reason that happens is because if you think about this, say we want to remove this last element here, which is actually the tail element, right? This is our tail. So I'll just write tail. If I want to remove this, what I need to do is I need to find the node before it that points to it and change its pointer to go to the head node. So to do that, I actually need to traverse the entire list. And that's because we only have this linked forwards, which means that I can't by having the tail element access the element before it, which means I can't access that pointer. So if I want to remove an element, I don't know why that's happening. Anyways, if I want to remove an element from the end of the list, or I want to remove the tail element that still takes O n time. But if I want to remove an element from the beginning of the list, that isn't going to take O n time because all I need to do to remove that is change the pointer here to be the element that it's pointing to, which we can do because we have access to that front element as well as this tail element. So anyways, that has been it for circular list. I hope you guys learned a little bit in the next video. We will talk about doubly linked lists, which are more complex and they have their own advantages over singly linked lists. If you guys have any other data structure you'd like to hear below, please let me know. And with that being said, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos.